Hey, uh, welcome to Martin Makes It. This video is going to explain how I designed and coded my Wi-Fi controlled Tamiya KI84 using ChatGPT. The code I used in this project, as well as the code for the tutorial, will be up on GitHub, link below, as well as schematics for the ESP8266 wiring. The full ChatGPT conversation will also be linked below, and you can see the entire process with all the prompts and responses. I want to be upfront that I do have prior coding experience, and this would be fairly difficult if you don't have at least some experience with coding. While ChatGPT can be useful for writing code, if something goes wrong or it doesn't compile, it can be pretty difficult to figure out what the problem is. Sometimes you can ask GPT what the problem is, and it'll straight up lie to you. Also, you can tell ChatGPT that it made a mistake and it will believe you and change the code to correct the mistake, even if it was already correct. I'll try and have all the parts used in this build linked below. There'll be Amazon affiliate links, so I do get a little something if you make a purchase, so I appreciate it. I'm thinking about making this into like a kit that you could buy that you could just drop into a project. Let me know if that's something that you might be interested in down in the comments below. So to test out your circuit, I'd recommend you get an ESP8266 development board to test out the circuit prior to soldering anything together. And here I'm just setting up the first light to test if it works. And now we move over to ChatGPT. I used an incremental approach, getting one thing to work and then moving on to the next part. And so here I just wanted to get the lights to turn on. Copy the code over to Arduino IDE. Upload it. And one thing to note is that the pins and code are not what is labeled on the board. I used the pinouts on randomnerdtutorials.com. And it looks like it's flashing, which is great. Check the other pin, make sure it's flashing on that one too. I'm asking it to set up the motor. I'm having it start the motor right away, then turn off after 10 seconds, and then turn back on after three seconds. I'm not actually gonna hook up the motor yet because that requires me to hook up an external power source, which I'm not ready to do. So the LED is gonna be a stand-in for the motor. Testing that both light pins still work, and that resistor there is to limit the current to the LED so it doesn't pull more power than the board limits. Right now I have a 220 ohm on there, which is more than is needed, but it's fine. We'll figure out what we actually need later. Switch the pin here to the motor pin, and you'll see that the light is turned on, which means the motor's on, and then it turns off for about three seconds, just like we talked about. Asking ChatGPT here to add a button on pin 5 and make it so that when the button is pushed, the motor will start, and if the motor is already running, it'll stop the motor. One thing that you want to avoid is using delays, and ChatGPT will use a delay as its first course of action rather than using the millis slash current millis style of timekeeping. So when you make a prompt, you typically have to tell it every time that it should avoid using delays. And I forgot to do that here, and I had to ask it to redo the code without using delays. And so got that uploaded and now just need to wire up the button. I didn't actually need to use the pull-up resistor as the ESP8266 has internal pull-ups. I figured that out later, but as you can see, it still works. And here I'm measuring the forward voltage of the LED to determine what value of resistor I need. It ended up being about 80 ohms for nine milliamps, but the lowest I had was a hundred. So I went with that. I tried to show the difference between the brightness here between the 220 and the 100. Uh, but uh, didn't do a great job. Asking ChatGPT now to ramp the motor speed up using PWN over set intervals. These values will need to be tweaked based on the engine start sound that we use, uh, so I just guessed to start with. Also, the lowest value is going to need to be tweaked to find the lowest RPM that the motor can spin reliably. And also asking now to make sure that the motor turns off after 30 seconds. We'll upload that and then we'll see if the light slowly ramps up in brightness. And yeah, it looks like it's getting brighter, but it actually seems like it's doing it gradually, just slightly increasing over time rather than being in discrete stages. So we'll have to check on that. So after inspecting the code, it was ramping the speed value based on time. So each interval would increase the speed over the time of the interval. I asked ChatGPT to change it, uh, and it did. 
and now I'm going to be adding in the sound effects. And this is probably one of the most challenging bits in this project because ChatGPT was basically no help at all. It explained the general process, but it required a lot of research to figure out how to do it. To get the audio file onto the ESP8266 SPIPS file system, I used the ESP8266 Sketch Data Upload tool using the guide I found on randomnerdtutorials.com. One thing to note is that the ESP8266 Sketch Data Upload tool is not available in Arduino IDE2. You need to use the older 1.8 as shown there. I went ahead and created the data folder, copied in my sound file. I uploaded the file and sorry that you can't see the menus there, but it's the ESP8266 sketch data upload in the tools menu. I copied over some of the code from the main file so I could get it to work. There isn't a lot there, just the includes, the variable declarations, and then playing the file at the right time. After I uploaded the data and the sketch, I copy and pasted the code into ChatGPT to let it know the new base for our code. It's good to occasionally do this to make sure that any changes you made by hand are captured by ChatGPT. And then we ask it to add the web server that will allow us to control things over Wi-Fi. I use the ESP async web server library, which is linked down below. There are several different options for web servers, so when using ChatGPT, it's best to specify which one you want to use. When using ChatGPT, just remember that nothing you put in there is private or secure, so be mindful when uploading your code that you aren't including any personal information. It's probably better that you don't include your Wi-Fi information, but that's up to you if you want to have to change it every time you copy and paste the code. And now that we know that the web server is running, we'll have ChatGPT build us the web page with the controls for the motor and the light. And so that's just about do it for the code. And we'll just finish up our wiring now. Setting up the wiring for the Max 98357A. This is a DAC, a digital to analog converter, an amplifier all in one. This uses the I2S system of the ESP8266. It requires three pins from the ESP8266 as well as power. And so the engine startup sound appears to be working, but it seems like it's cutting in and out. I ran into this problem on the main build as well, and I attribute it to the breadboard wiring not being 100% solid. So I think soldering everything together and not using those clips would probably cure the issue. Adding the MOSFET here, and just go ahead and disregard the part number on this. It wasn't working, so I swapped it later for an IRL B8721. The correct part should be listed on the GitHub page. Also, please disregard the resistor running from the D2 to D7 pin. I'll fix that in a moment. That is a 10K pull-down resistor that should be going to ground. And now wiring up the motor itself. Putting in the diode. This is to protect the MOSFET from inductive kickback of the motor. Also added a capacitor to reduce the radio frequency interference. And here I am wondering why it's not working. It, could it be the resistor that I put in there wrong? Yes, yes, it, it was. All right, let's try that again. Now the motor doesn't start right away because we're trying to turn it on at too low of an RPM. But uh, hey, look at that, it's working.
This is the GitHub page where you can find all the code for both the tutorial and the main project. You can download everything by clicking on code and then download zip. You can also find all the libraries, the tutorials I followed, the parts list, and the Amazon affiliate links, as well as the schematic. So, you know, thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful. I'm sorry it takes so long for me to release videos, but uh, here's a sneak peek of my next project. Should be pretty, pretty neat. Thanks so much for the 65,000 views on my last video and the 900 subscribers. Uh, you all are awesome. I super appreciate it. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. You know, do all that YouTube stuff.